Um, but we have done Facebook Live, so if you miss something, I have a terrible habit. I geek out on all of this, so I will have a tendency to talk very fast. And if y'all ask questions, I will totally get off subject matter and answer all the questions. I think I didn't get out of here last time till like 11. I got home at like 11.30, and it was supposed to end at 8.30, so, because I will geek out on all of this. This particular one, what was the official title, like leveraging social media in your business? That's super boring. Um, back here, I accidentally did a Groupon for social media education or masterclass. I was really doing it for the 90 day people. I wanted to record how to do, set up a Groupon for your business. And if any of y'all have actually done a Groupon, it's not like the other stuff. You have to like get approved, they have to hand look at it. And the only way to show someone how to do it is to do it. And I forgot to delete it. But she did make a very valid point that when most people are going to a presentation to learn about social media, it is the most vapid BS you've ever heard. Mm -hmm. And yes, I curse. If I drop F-bombs, sorry if any of y'all are like super anti-cursing. I don't really care to try not to. Um, <laughs> but she did point out most of them are like, oh, Facebook's got 2.2 billion users and 1.8 billion users. You should totally be there. How many people do you have a Facebook account? I will make y'all raise your hands. I will pick on you if you don't. What is that? Does anybody not, let me try this again. Does anybody not have a Facebook account? Nobody. Would anybody like the people in this room to be their clients? Sure. Does anybody think that their clients are not on Facebook? Unless your clients are like, no, they're on so, they're, no, they're, they're getting there. They're Facebook. getting there. They're fact, getting better. They're the getting older better. people, little known fact, they spend more time on Facebook than all of us combined because they ain't got nothing else to do when they're lonely. Right. It's actually a little sad. The younger people are the only ones not on Facebook. Yeah. They hide on Instagram. <laughs> Guess who owns Instagram? Facebook. <laughs> they saw it coming a mile away and they're like, how much? A billion? Yes, thank you. May I have another? They decided to squish Google Plus successfully. They decided to squish Snapchat. I'm positive. I'm pretty sure. What was the girl? Chloe Kardashian came out. She's like, oh, Snapchat? Who even has that anymore? I'm like, how much was that check that Facebook paid you to say that? Because they had lost like 100,000 accounts in one day because she came out and said, Snapchat who? Oh, that's a lot of power, people. <laughs> so what I wanted to kind of walk you through is a very quick version of a customer value journey as it relates specifically to social media. I will be mostly talking about Facebook and LinkedIn because both of those platforms, more than any other platform out there, have the potential capability of helping your business in all eight sectors of a customer value journey. So does anybody really use anything besides those two? You can still use Instagram. I'm not gonna lie, Instagram because it is not as closed off and not public. So like Facebook has all these permissions that you know you can't just go see other people's stuff and you can't just message them, which is great. I love my privacy. I like not being spammed like I am on LinkedIn. By the way, I totally spammy people on LinkedIn <laughs> as I say that. There's a report button now, you gotta be careful. Um, and LinkedIn's the same way. If you are more in a B2B space, have a seat, come join us. There's food and drink if you wanna grab something before you sit. Um, but LinkedIn's really good for the B2B crowd. Facebook's good for the everything crowd. Like the B2B crowd's like, oh no, no, I only work with professionals and business owners. They are not on Facebook. I'm like, dude, they're on Facebook while they hoop. It is the first app they open up in the morning and it is the last one they look at at night. They're on there, it just reaching them is different than LinkedIn, right? Quick rundown. Anybody heard of like a sales funnel or a sales process or something of that nature? That is all this is, this is a framework. So the phrase, will that work for my business? Do you need leads? Do you need money? Are you trying to build a community? Then yes, it's relevant to you, right? If you just go to a nine to five and you do what you're told, this is not for you. Is that fair? The concept is just a way to put people in a set pattern 
step one, step two, step three. The job of marketing, my job as a marketer, is only to get a person from one to two, two to three, regardless of what that step is, is not to get leads or get sales, it's just to move people from step to step. Why are there steps? Great question. Let me all ask that. Desmond Morris, so one of my mentors came up with this, and it's based off a guy called Desmond Morris. Desmond Morris is an anthropologist. He watches like bugs and deer and stuff like that and decides how does one strange bug meet another strange bug, hook up and make babies. I have to imagine he's probably up on a patio in Uptown. Anybody ever been to Uptown? That is some crazy people watching. Crazy, or maybe, what is it, Legacy West or something up in the Plano version? Insane. So I'm just like imagining a guy just sitting on a patio and he's like super INTJ for those familiar with like Myers-Briggs and just going, what are all these strange things moving around? You know, they look a lot like those bugs I studied. <laughs> what if I studied them? <laughs> I wrote a book about it, but not in the same way that like we might write a book where like we want some you know acclaim and some money from it. No, he was just like, yeah, I wrote a study, you know, I'm gonna read my super smart stuff. Um, there it is. Except it was really clever, and you know, the sad for all those guys, y'all guys, y'all know y'all have it much more difficult in the dating world than the ladies do, right? It's only twelve steps, twelve freaking steps to getting laid. I mean, that's what it comes down to, right? How does one strange human being meet another strange human being and make babies? That's getting laid, right? Twelve freaking steps. There's only eight up here because you're not trying to get your client's clothes off. No one said they were in the escort service. So I'm making the assumption we only need eight steps, right? The thing to know there, though, is it's only if you skip two steps in that dating ritual, that's the definition of assault. <laughs> So, who can I pick on? Hey, Karen, come here. <laughs> I know Karen really well. What's it been? Three, four years? Four five. Years. Almost five. Yeah. Wow, I've been up in Frisco a long time. Yeah. Because I started going to like network meetings when I didn't know what to do with all my free time when I went full time. With babies. So, I've known her five years, right? Is that awkward? <laughs> I've known her five years and it's awkward. Where's someone yeah, I don't know? Yeah. Would it be awkward if I went over and touched your face like that? I'll let you sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Super awkward, yeah. right? If I just started like, coming and touching your right. hair? Yeah. So freaking weird. How many of y'all do networking events? Yeah, I know you are. How many times have you heard someone tell you, don't go in there and try to make a sell. Go look for referral partners. It is the equivalent of walking up to a stranger and sticking your hand on their face. When you jump all the way up here to the equivalent of asking someone to be a referral partner for you, you are walking up to a stranger and sticking your hand on their face. Super awkward. Like, if any of y'all touch my face, I'm going to drop kick you. <laughs> Not joking. The Michael Kors stiletto is going to go through your trachea, and I hope you're okay with that, all right? Not cool, but we do that on Facebook, we do it with our friends, that's the, literally the reason people hate network marketers is because they go to all their friends and say, buy my stuff, jumping five steps, or worse, buy my stuff and also invite all your friends to buy my stuff, which is jumping all the way to touching my face. My husband's about the only person that's allowed to touch my face except for demonstrative purposes. And when my mentors do it to me, I'm like, oh my god, you're touching me. I'm like, Sheldon, like, don't touch me. You're touching me, you're touching me, you're touching me right? <laughs> I'm also the INTJ. I assure you the, the extrovertness is learned behavior. Social media, though, has become very interesting. There's so much of the sales process that can be leveraged with social media. And of course, because social media is a free platform, all y'all want to be using it. You're like, Google Ads? That seems like really expensive. And I tried it one time. It took all my money. I spent $1,000 in 60 seconds. But yeah, you did something wrong. Um, we can have to talk about that. I tried Facebook, and it got no leads. How much did you spend? $13 for how many days? For one. one day. All right. What kind of page were you driving it to? My web page, what's that look like? Oh, dear God, how many words can you fit on a page? Is that 5,000 words on one page? Oh, 
How many navigation things do you have? Like 23? Oh my gosh! Yeah, it's not the Facebook ads. The Facebook ads are fine. I assure you. Uh, what you're screwing up is your process. Um, I'm not going to go into the machine you need behind the social media. I will just say that anybody seen the picture of the iceberg with the water cut through and you can only see like this much of the iceberg and there's like this much rock underneath the water? Yeah. Social media is the tiny triangle on top. So I do want y'all guys to all understand that when I'm teaching social media. It's what everybody wants me to talk about. It's the thing I've gotten really freaking good at. There's a whole iceberg underneath that you're missing. Whether it's your sales process, your operations, your financials, your profit loss statements, whether you have a funnel in place, whether you understand the different things, and I will kind of tiptoe into some of the strategy, but please do understand there's a strategy and social media is just the top. If you don't have the, the iceberg below the surface, nothing I tell you is going to work effectively or on scale. You might find a little luck. There's definitely some success on Facebook, especially, I'm not gonna lie, this fellas, this is where, this is the one time it's not to your benefit. The ladies on Facebook, on social, we like network. Like our networking, like superpowers just freaking work on Facebook. So when I tell my guys to go do the same thing my ladies are doing effectively, it's just not quite as effective as the women. It's just not. We have that communication thing going down. <clears throat> Desmond Morris's model though, right? Step by step, sometimes you're going to get to skip steps. You're going to get the client... I had the owner of Super Chicks just walk in my freaking door one day. And I'm like, oh, uh, hello. He's like, I need Facebook ads. You just jumped to step five. That's awesome. That's cool when that happens. You can't plan on that to be everything in your business. You cannot expect that that's going to grow your, grow your business magically or that suddenly that someone's just going to go out and refer you everyone. If I just make one person happy, they'll refer me to like five of their friends and they'll refer me to five of your friends. It's like, that never worked with network marketing. If any of y'all understand large number theory, um, you like have everybody in your circle in like just six, I don't know, what is it, six levels? The basic concept is step one, awareness. People do not know you exist. Where's someone who is new? You're new, right? Did you know he existed? I'm going to count me looking down. <laughs> Did you know he existed before you came here today? Do you even remember what he does? What's he do? Something an e-commerce. Oh! <laughs> oh that was good. good. <laughs> Barely has awareness, right? You can, there's only three ways to grow your business. It's just three. More customers, more money at each sale, and customers who come back. That's it. If they don't know you exist in the first place, ain't freaking happening. I think so many small business owners, this is where they get lost. I've seen when they have all the rest of it built out, they've paid somebody tens of thousands of dollars. They've gotten educated, $120,000 in student debt, and they don't understand this one. They've paid for everything else but that one. If people do not know you exist, how are they supposed to go and come hire you? That one seemed fair? That one's like the real basic one. Engagement. This is where social media lives. It's just having a conversation, right? If I walk up to someone I've just met, I don't start monologuing. I don't start selling. Hey, guys, I got drinks. Sweet tea, food. How about it? And you can find a seat somewhere. You have to start monologuing. You're like, hi, my name is Jenna. Hi, my name is Tom. How are you doing? Good. Did you have a good drive in? Yeah. It's zip, 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 zip. Engagement. Ever like that know, like, and trust? I gotta know you. That's right over here. Gotta get to know who you are, what you do. Have a conversation. Companies are now, has anybody heard the word KPIs? Things we measure to see how we're doing, right? My mentors are now measuring how many conversations are we starting and how much did it cost us? I'm going to pick on y'all because y'all was late. Y'all just wait for it. 
This is where social media predominantly lives the way most of you are using it. If you make a post on your Facebook, that's engagement. If you're trying to sell on Facebook, that's like out of everything up here, it's what social media does the worst, right? Too narcissistic. <laughs> but it does engage well. I mean, have you ever gone and you've been scrolling and you hit someone's social media and you're like, I have to respond to that Becky, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, who's got a Facebook war? You get blogged. Huh? <laughs> you, you, you ran with blogged the other day. <laughs> well, that was this morning, and I'm still upset. I should have known better. Not to talk politics. He's I just thought it was such a safe subject. Um, <laughs> side note, if politics ain't helping your business, drop it from your conversation. Unless it's like your thing, right? Conversation, though, that is engagement. A blog post is engagement. Your posts on Facebook are engagement. If you write an article on LinkedIn, engagement. Post on LinkedIn, engagement. Most of social media, how you're using it is engagement. And when you try to put a, a sales post up there, you're usually jacking that up, okay? Subscription phase, how many guys are single? I got some, oh, I got some single ladies, there we go. How many of you like a girl's number? Permission to contact. So this is not, I found an email address and I'm putting it in my spam list. This is, I actually have permission to call the other person. All right? Not that you just, like, looked over and you're like, what's your phone number? Yeah. Or I did some reverse lookup of his name. Girls, y'all know we stalk, yeah, right? We find some <laughs> weird information online. Okay, we'll have those boys down. This is actual permission. They have handed you their email address an ethical bribe, typically, right? You have offered an ebook or a download or some kind of service for free. They've given you information in exchange for something else. My biggest complaint here is people try to treat the free offer like it's free. How many people have been there who have done paid ads, billboards, magazines, anything like that? Only a handful? What's the most expensive stuff you've bought with no return? So you're like, oh, jeez, let me think. What's an average cost per lead? We were, uh, you and I were talking. About $40, $50. $40 $50. or $50. That's how much he's paying for someone's information. And y'all are, like, freaking out because y'all don't want to offer anything of value for an email address, a phone number, and a first name. 50 bucks. I would argue sometimes that's cheap. On Google, I've seen insurance companies go as much as $88 for information. So when y'all offer an ethical bribe, make it worth something. <laughs> They're giving you your information. I can assure you when Cambridge Atlantica hit that your information had value. When Facebook has advertisers, how do you think that somebody got the lead? He bought them, but somebody before, a marketer, had to go get those leads somehow. They had to pay Google, they had to pay Facebook. There's something they are doing that it costs them money to acquire an email address and a name. Start treating your leads as such. Stop offering garbage or God for freaking bid. Would you like to sign up for my newsletter? No, I don't want your spam, Kathy. No. Why do I want your newsletter? Heck, you're probably so like in that, you're not even gonna email me. Or you're going to be one of these markers who emails me every freaking day. I don't want your stuff. Now we step into the magic. Most of y'all are aware of that kind of stuff, right? Y'all know what happens. Y'all go through the process, but y'all don't apply it to your own business, right? I'm going to get y'all. If y'all ring, I'm going to pick on y'all. Conversion. So I was talking to the young lady from the church here. When I talk about conversion, I mean time or money some amount of significant time. Technically speaking, y'all are all sitting through my boring talk. Y'all are all converting to the dark side, right? Y'all are all converting to me. My, you're joining my cult. Y'all didn't know y'all were signing up for that, right? Or you can do it in cash. Anybody remember Columbia Records? Where's my old people? <laughs> y'all be calling out your age. Anybody tape a penny on a piece of paper and mail it back? 
<laughs> we wanted that free music. I got my, one of my first CDs, Prince, Diamonds and Pearls <laughs> album, and Paula Abdul taping a freaking penny up there <laughs> to get my free stuff, not truly understanding that there's like a right. contract on it, I guess. Did you ever pay for the edit? I did. You make it stop. I make swear. it stop. Um, yeah, that's the hard part. Is like, you're like, I bought my 15. Stop. You're like, you're charging me like 25 a disc, mm. and I can go to Walmart and get it for 14. Right. Everyone who buys it like online, song by song, is like, that exchange of one penny converted you to a customer. One penny changes the nature of the relationship on a psychological level. It is. It is a buy-in. I have people come to my office every Tuesday. We hang out and do like the boring networking thing, except with like some kind of education or a speaker. Um, the fact that they put money in a jar is a conversion. I did the Groupon by accident. That one's tricky. Groupon. They are Groupon's customer. They convert to me on time, but if I don't get more value, then they are still just Groupon's customer. So if you are leveraging, so some of you, how many of you are the fiber sellers? All right, I got a couple. Fiber sellers, if they buy something, you have to recognize that they are fibers customers. I've seen some very brilliant fiber people selling and they will leverage after they give you, like they'll deliver the service, they'll jump in and say, that was cool. The next time you buy two, I'll give you an extra one for free. That's the point you start to convert them to your customer. That first purchase, nah. They just did some random search. They don't distinguish you from this guy to this guy in any freaking country. You're just somebody fiber <coughs> congregated. Until you transfer that to yourself, that's fibers. But you do need to convert. So where are my consultants at? Y'all know y'all want time. Y'all want that first appointment, the discovery discussion. Y'all want to have like some conversation where you can walk into a sales conversation. You want them, uh, what is the uh, Perry Belcher three question close? What are your goals? Why have you not met them? How can I help? Right? Y'all want to get into that conversation. If you can get the appointment with them, them showing up is the conversion. So not just getting the information to schedule, but them actually showing up. Anybody ever done a webinar? Okay, webinar people. Signing up for the webinar is only subscription. Showing up is conversion, all right? This is the magical one that I love. So the one reason that one reason that I fell in love with this when Ryan Dice came out with it was that it stopped being linear. The funnel used to be like you come into the top and you fall through the bottom, right? And I was like, well, what if somebody does it, like they fall out the leaky bucket, then what? There's no answer for that. And my logical brain is like screaming error, error, error. It's not right. First of all, if they don't buy, we start wrapping in circles right here. And we send them in circles until they buy the thing we actually want to sell. Same thing up here. Once they buy, once they leave a review, we just wrap them in circles. We want them to spend money over and over again. Starbucks is really good at that. The other one, though, was this Excite one. Because none of the funnels included anything about Excite. Every one of y'all sat down and there's something in your chair, right? Y'all came in. There's wine. There's drinks. There's food. There's more sugar than you know you're supposed to have, but right. you're going to have it anyway, right? Yeah. Bread and circuses. Excite them. Have you anybody been to like one of these like programs and they like shoot t-shirts out of the, the ejecting thing, whatever? Bad, not we're good with words. Words are hard. Okay. I have seen people mow each other. <laughs> I've seen people mow each over each other over. You're messing me up, man. I'm trying to help. Those t-shirts, you know they're scratchy. And for the ladies, <laughs> you know they're like this big and they're like coming down to our ankles. They're like a nighttime shirt. They're so big. So scratchy. So scratchy. They always have the tag in the back. I'm like so sensory. Ugh, can't handle that, right? We're never going to wear it. And we will mow someone down to get it. 
I've been on a cruise ship. I went on a Christmas cruise on Royal Caribbean, and they had some like, I don't know, like nightlight thing where they've got the glowy things on your neck and the rings that blink, and they're throwing the stuff out, and my kids are having conniption fits that they need this ring that probably costs two cents in China, mm -hmm. and I have to acquire one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mardi Gras effect. Over there, there's a drumstick. A drumstick. It's used. It's beat up. Does anybody know the band Megadeth? Oh, yeah. Right next to Metallica, right? My dad and my uncle were huge into this band, and they both go to this Megadeth concert. And one of the things they do is this, I can't remember the guy's name who's a drummer, and I'm a former drummer, is they're cranking out the sticks, and they hit the rims of the snare drums, and they hit it with such force that it will splinter the sticks. And as a drummer, I'm like, I don't think I could hit it that hard if I tried, but that was like my middle school chicken wings that I was not hurting anything, right? They just take the stick and they throw it out. It was worth so much that my dad and uncle got into a fist fight <laughs> to get the stick with each other. Oh, they didn't even realize that they're swinging at each other trying to get the stick, both of them, for me. And they're fighting each other. That is how big Excite is. Whether you are offering a t-shirt, whether you're a consultant offering a quick win. So like one of the things that I offered, especially um, it came off of Fiverr when I was a Fiverr seller, is I would do Facebook audits. I did so many. I probably did 250 Facebook audits on Fiverr for five bucks a piece that I had like a template Long, I could run a Facebook audit with my eyes closed on any one of your Facebook accounts at this point. Mm -hmm. It's that simple, stupid for me, right? It's a quick win. Even though it takes me no time at all, even though turning over a document this long takes me 10 minutes max, and 10, I only needed five. The 10 was just me getting into y'all's business. I'm like, oh my God, her jewelry's so fabulous. <laughs> you know, it's like that, you're like winding through things, right? You need excitement for your people that you're trying to convert. And we are building a cult, by the way. And if y'all want to study cult, I'm not kidding. I'm not saying make your cult members drink Kool-Aid. I'm just saying, at the end of the day, studying cults would not be a bad idea. Because how they build a cult is how, if y'all looked at Nike, they, can, they, they have such a following, they can support people. Charles Barkley got arrested for assault some guy spit on him, he picked him up, and he threw him out the window. Like, who spits on Charles Barkley? It's like massive, right? I never thought to look up that story, like the pre-story. He's going through the judicial system, and the judge kind of lets him off, because, I mean, the guy spit on him, right? Like, I think we'd all, if we could, do the same thing. Charles Barkley looked straight up at him and was like, you know, he's like, you know, have you learned your lesson? It's like, Charles was like, yeah, next time taking him up to the top floor, <laughs> roll him out and finish the job. Like, Damn. That's what he looks Nike, like. everyone else dropped him. Nike kept him. Colin Kaepernick, Nike kept him. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. I, somebody told me he was up to 200 women. Yeah. Nike kept him. <laughs> because part of Nike's community, what does Nike say? Just do it. Was it just think about it, then do it? No. They said just do it. But that's where all press, good or bad, is good press for Nike. Hey, all press is good. Bad, good press, it all works out, right? And they know their community. When you, when you can build that, you can give excitement to your people on such a level. Nike can throw out a little wristband. It costs them nothing to make in China. Nothing. And they border a little swoop, and the words just doing on it, and heck, put Charles Barkley's face on the paper around it, right? Hand it out to you, and you'll fight over it. What can you do to excite your people between when they come into the top and when they come out the back? If y'all don't do anything, think about that one, because no one else talks about that one. And it doesn't matter how boring your product or doing lighting services. There's always something that will excite somebody in your stuff. What are your competitors not doing? When I talk to realtors, it's almost across the board. My realtors, nobody wants to offer a free CMA. 
They're like, no, no, then they'll go sell it themselves. I'm like, ain't nobody want to sell their own <laughs> damn house. <laughs> I tried that. Yeah. You know what? I ended up with a crazy man in my house at 9 p.m. at night. It was not funny. But if you get a CMA, you are in their house. They are converted. Yeah. All you need to do now is excite them. And when I've like walked my clients that are realtors through that system, we had one from Briggs Freeman give an entire package that when you open the lid, a video played. It was exciting. It didn't, wasn't just a CMA on two sheets of black and white paper. It was a 54-page, full-color document that had been well-researched in their neighborhood. And this is all free. They have no contract at this point in time. But if a realtor does that for you with zero contract, and the other ones won't even come out to your house and do a CMA for free. Who are you going to hire? Right. They won't even pick up the phone, Jenna. Come on. <laughs> that was the same one that didn't pick up the phone. It's a different yeah. story. <laughs> Excite your customers. Treat your leads like they're worth something. Know how much they're worth. What are the cost of goods to be sold? Like how much is it going to cost you to make them a client? How much is the profit there? What are the margins you can spend to acquire the customer? Sell them. I feel like I don't need to spend that much time on this system. Sell them your core offer. And this is the point I will say, sell them again and again and again and again. If you only have one product to sell them, that's freaking great. Partner with other people who will give you a kickback and sell them them. Real estate, realtors are great at this. Got the mortgage guy in the back. They can connect somebody with a mortgage banker. They can connect somebody with a title company. I'm gonna forget all these different people. They can connect with electricians, roofers, the guys who do the, the, the landscapers, the home inspectors. There's so many other people they can connect. Some they can take a cut of, some they cannot. But even the ones you can't take a cut of, you've got goodwill to your, your client, right? You've helped out a partner your partner's going to refer if you're bringing their half their business, right? Don't be stingy. Sharing is caring. That's what I keep telling my three kids, right? <laughs> Create a book. Become an Amazon affiliate and show them the stuff that it's needed to use your services. Sell other people's books. Sell other people's product. If it's going to help your customer, you get to excite them by introducing to the other people in your network that they need to know. Doctors do it, they don't even think about it. Lawyers do, they don't even think about it. Think bigger than yourself. Advocate. Get them to write a review. Maybe ask them for some feedback. I know that's crazy. Send an email, like, how'd I do, right? Just get them to write a review. I'm not even talking, like, video or anything special. Like, I'm a small business owner. I thrive on, you know, the goodwill. If you wouldn't mind leaving me a Facebook, LinkedIn, Yelp. What are the other good ones? Google is about to take on Yelp, so work on your Google reviews while it's easy. Go get the review, and then bribe the living daylights out of them to give you the referral. If the lead down here was worth 40 to 50 bucks, why wouldn't you pay your referrals? Mm. I would call it an affiliate system. I'd go get a JV partner, like they buy with your link, you get half, I get half, we're all happy. And then I see other people where the profit margin's like 50,000. They're like, no, no, no. Um, I'll buy you like a bottle of wine. <laughs> All right, well, this one over here is offering me a, a, a cruise, and you are offering a bottle of wine. Guess who I'm sending the referral no, no, to? No, no. Right. I'm going to get me on the cruise, and I'll um, say hi to you from Belize. In fact, I'll buy you a bottle of wine <laughs> for nothing, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense to everybody. Any questions on that? I feel like I kind of explained it well. Now social media. Let's layer that on top. I'm not even going to talk about anything else. I'm not talking about funnels. Just social media. So we've already established I'm not going to really go into much of it. Engagement's the easy part, right? What about awareness? Awareness is like the hard part. People pay a lot of money for that. How many of you are in a Facebook group, though? Man, I know the rest of y'all are lying. Everybody's in a Facebook. You're like, um, 50? 
how many. <laughs> Facebook has decided that people would rather talk to people who are in their interest groups than their friends and family. And my mom crazy. I got her blocked on like five different accounts. <laughs> she keeps trying on my block, block, block. But in our groups, these people are talking about the things that we actually enjoy. When I had a little baby, so my third child, I have a toddler who runs so fast and he thought it was really funny to leave the park. And I've got like the newborn baby and I'm like, well, actually first I was pregnant. I'm like, well, I'm like, this is not working. Um, but when I had a baby, I still have to keep up with the toddler. So I learned how to use those woven wraps, like the women in Asia and Africa. Yeah. And I would strap the, the little one down and have her tied tight on my back so that when he took off running, mama could keep up. <laughs> well, <laughs> let him know that too. There's a whole community, especially in the D Dallas Fort Worth area, just for baby wearing moms. Mm -hmm. So whether you're in a baby Bjorn or a Ergo 360 or a Diddy, like then you start learning all the words, right? You are in this group because it was the only way to learn about how to strap that damn thing. I'm like watching YouTube videos and somebody's like, oh, it's called baby wearing. Join this group. I'm like, okay. And then there's like 50 million videos showing me how to do it. And this lady's like, well, just come over to the nappy shop. And we have this group over here, and you can show up at McDonald's with your kids, and it's okay to play, and we'll walk you through it. Well, I've got a baby Bjorn. Oh, uh-uh, honey. That one is so terrible for the baby's legs, and it's going to be so bad in your shoulders. You'll never keep doing it. Let me just put you on this $197 Didymos that's got like a four, I don't know, string wrap, and it's like butter. <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you, I walked in this group, and they were all hippie, liberal mamas, and I'm like my conservative married to an attorney, straight-laced, in my heels and my work clothes, and I'm like, this, okay, but they're strapping my baby to my back, so that's cool, right? We are all one piece. Um, that became the group, though, and I lived and died by that group until they made me cry over my weight, and then I was out. What? But, Girl, <laughs> I'm too skinny. It was the other way. Um, but that was my group I lived in. I hung out with them during the week. I did activities in the evening with them. That was my group. Those were my people. That was my tribe for the time period that I was doing that. Are you in a group with your ideal customers? Are you participating in that group as an authority and a leader? It is well known in the digital marketing space that I don't even have to create my own group. I mean, I do. I've got several. All I have to do is go to someone else's group and spend more time in it. Answer all the questions they're leaving off to the side. I was talking to a fellow digital marketer there in the back talking about how I am just in love with Kartra. They just added sites. I just figured out how to use them, Karen. It's so cool. Oh, yes. Got the header and the footer. Every time I go in there, I'm just giddy with glee. I don't have to create my own Kartra group. I just go to the official one, and I do a better job at it than they do. Hop into a private conversation. So I've answered a question that somebody asked in a group that's not my own. They have no idea who I am. Some of them are in South Africa, the Philippines, Idaho. I'm in Texas. I'm a Dallas girl. I'm not traipsing through the cornfield, right? I've answered a question, so we've had a conversation. And they're like, that's really great. Do you mind if I ask you a private business question? Absolutely. Now they're in my personal messenger where I can answer questions. I have permission to message them back and forth and they are converting in time. And I'm like, you know what? That's really great. It'd be awesome if you use my link to buy Kartra because I'm gonna make a certain percentage of the sell on an ongoing, repeating, monthly basis. And that's valuable to me. One of the things I've done is creating my 90 group is I created this really great template that after talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, I know would be really helpful to you. If you buy Kartra with my link, I'll send it to you. 
Oh my god, Jenna, that's awesome. Do you mind if we hop on a call because it's so fucking confusing? I'd love to. Do you have Kartra? Let's hop on Zoom. We'll make sure you use it. And because they're paying for Kartra every single month, that is reoccurring revenue. You know what? I really appreciate it. It's been really great learning about your business. I'm glad that I was be help I was able to be helpful to you. Remember, we haven't left Facebook yet besides for them to purchase Kartra. Do you mind leaving me a review on Facebook? I've got a negative review, somebody. I said hashtag make Facebook fun again. They called me a privileged navel gazer. Would you mind I know it's a true story? Um, would you mind leaving a review over there? Because um, my 4.8 is sucking. I'd love to. You've been so freaking helpful. By the way, my 90-day course. I mean, I know it's not right for you because you're actually really good at this stuff. You already have your avatar. You already have all that stuff. Um, but if you want to use this link and sign up to be an affiliate, I pay my affiliates out of the uh, $1,997. I give them $798 every time I make a sale. Holy shit, I've got five clients that, that would be great for right now. I'm so freaking tired of hearing their question. Awesome. Here's the link to go sign up. Here's the link for the sales page. I've not left Facebook. I have dead silence. LinkedIn is the exact same way. They have groups. Their posts are actually easier to be seen when you share a post on LinkedIn because it is not the behemoth that Facebook is. They're not out of real estate. You like my post? Oh, let's take it because this has actually happened last time. People took pictures because we did some activities along the wall. We made some cool signs. Everyone wanted to take a picture with their sign and then they put it up on LinkedIn. So now they are essentially promoting me. They're encouraging engagement. I go in there and I make a comment because I've commented and I liked. All, almost 10,000 of my people, that post will now show up in their post or their feed, right? So now they're getting exposure, I'm getting exposure, and every single new person that likes it that post now shows up in that person's feed. LinkedIn's kind of amazing like that. They're just not all big out. That will not stay the same. Microsoft bought them out, and up to this point, they've been doing what LinkedIn had already been doing. Microsoft's now making changes. LinkedIn now has LinkedIn Live, which is a pain in the tush. Oh, my God. You can recommend people on LinkedIn and be recommended, both written and just the little touch of a button. You can actively go promote other people on LinkedIn without ever leaving the platform. But the selling is not done in a post. Bleh. It's told with a story. Now, are there some like caveats to that? Sure. Can you create a selling group? Sure. But there are certain ways that this functions, and there are certain ways that it does not function. Let's try this. On the awareness side, how many people are leveraging a social media for awareness? Hang on. There we go. Yeah, don't be shy, right? You can go into LinkedIn tonight and request connections that are your ideal customers. Awareness. You can go into groups on Facebook and join them tonight and start creating awareness. You can take pictures where you are today, right? There's a big old throne, the throne is there for a reason, to take a fun social media picture. Do you think, anybody think that throne would not get attention on social media? I want it in my house. That's a badass throne, right? <laughs> you get one on the one side of the dining room table and one on the other side and then all the minions chairs in between. Yeah. Go take a picture over there or somewhere else fun Post that on social media and tell a story of what you did, a story about what you did. And after you hooked their attention, after you've told the story, I really think, guys, that this is going to help me in my process to sell blah, blah, blah. It's subtle. It's inception, right? You're just putting the seed, like, this is what I do. Has anybody noticed throughout my talk, I don't have to sell from stage. I can drop just an inception point, right? That's what you should be doing on social media. 
fun pictures, fun stories, engaging your ideal audience, which then brings me to politics. I made the dumb mistake of breaking my own rule today. It's not my pet rule. I kind of talked about the branding for y'all that were here last. Pick four topics that you talk about for your business on your business pages, four topics that you talk about on your personal pages. If politics is not helping your business, and you have people on both sides, don't talk about politics. Now, as it happens, one of my personal ones is women's issues, and this political issue was a women's issue. Did not expect it to go the way yeah, it did. Was like, oh my god, kind of shocked. <laughs> but that's how politics happens, and I have seen somebody. I've seen my phone blow up while I'm trying to do my mascara because an attorney client. I will give him this, he does run from time to time, so it's important for him to be Republican in his state, in his county, it's 86% Republican, so fair game, right? I watched him get 30 negative reviews from all over the United States because he made some comment on someone else's post. So if politics is not your game, stay out of it. If sex and drugs are not your game, stay out of it. Pick your lane, Stay in your lane, right? <laughs> Be known for that on social media. I've talked it up about Karcher in the last six months that people now tag me to answer Karcher questions over and above the CEO and the two founders. That's how many questions I've answered on it. What is your lane? Stay in it, all right? How many of you are engaging on Facebook? Everybody, y'all know y'all are. How many of y'all think y'all are engaging well to start conversations for your business on Facebook? That's a much harder question. How many of y'all are engaging in the right places where your customers are on social media? That's hard, right? That takes deliberate thought. All too often, I got yawn. All too often we use social media, we're not being deliberate about it. We're not thinking about it. How many of y'all even have a possibility to subscribe to anything? I don't mean like a YouTube subscribe. I mean like email subscription, messenger subscription. We've got a handful of pros, right? How many of y'all have a conversion offer? That's hard. We do right? now. We do now. <laughs> I knew a lot of people that have no idea what I'm talking about. They want to jump right to the big boy. They have nothing on the small one. My mentor likes to pinpoint that one of his, um, one of their first members, they sold candle wicks on eBay. Just candle wicks, and they became the least expensive way to buy candle wicks on eBay. They're like, oh, you're offering it for 10? We'll sell it for five, for 100. If you are buying candle wicks, what you doing? Making candles? What do you think was in the box when the candle wicks showed up? Would you like to buy some wax? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the candle wicks was the entry point offer, and then they baited switch and they sold some candle wax and some, I don't know, what else do you make candles with? I've tried this, it did Six. not go out well, Six. right? Six. The little things that you pour the wax in and molds. essential oils, mold, there you go, molds. You can drop rings and stuff in them. Same thing, they're like, wow, that freaking worked. I wonder if it'll work on something else. So they went over to another member who sold guitars. He's like, I can't, there's no small guitar, right? But you can sell a guitar pick. Mm -hmm. And you can stamp out a hundred of them. They're like, they're less than a penny each on the manufacturing side. Here's a hundred guitar picks for 99 cents. Everyone who's buying a guitar pick has a Guitar. Guitar, right? Find something that's the thing that your customer's looking for before they need or somehow, somehow to identify them for the bigger thing you're selling. How many people of you have anything in the Excite? She's a pro, though. That's different. Anybody else? Some t-shirts? Brandy, I know you've got something. You have parties. Yes. Yeah? You've got some like hats. You had the hats. Uh, hats. I have a hat. Yes. I have, I have, have a sweater. I have like a luggage tag. Okay. No, that's perfect for travelers. 
I'd have to like do the big pom poms on this because I can't ever find my luggage when I check it. Think about something that you can give your person that will make them giddy. Giddy. Right? Giddy. Randy. I'm going to pick on him because I actually know that he does this well and he's being quiet in the back. If we go into my office in the other room, and it's a mess, please don't. There's a picture of me drawn from a party at his place and it has his logo on the bottom. So I have taken his logo and voluntarily put it up in my office. That's clever, right? I, eh. Y'all got the sell stuff down. I think probably next month will probably be recession proofing your business and focusing on sales. How many of y'all are asking for feedback and reviews? Y'all's Facebook is like decked out with 100 reviews? You're like, nah. LinkedIn, y'all got like 50 recommendations? Y'all are maxed out on, what's the thing called where you just tap it? Not recommendation. Uh, the stars. No. Where you no. tap it, you just put the plus sign and it says like, yeah, she's good at marketing strategy. Oh, yeah. 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 You tap it out. You know, yeah. Yeah. They only show like 10. Yeah. Yeah. Like 50. yeah. There's that on there. Go get that. If LinkedIn's your thing, go do that. Right? And promote. Here's the funny thing about social media. And everybody wants to run Google Analytics and Google Goals, or in my case, cars for now to see where their clients are coming from, which is awesome. You should know where is. your clients are coming from, right? And they're not always going to tell you. I've seen people just start talking to me. They know my name, my kid's name, what I'm doing, like what's recently on my feed. I'm like, who the fuck are you? You're in Austin. I'm like, but they followed me, and they know these things. They get my emails. You can't track everything. There's a thing called dark social. So if I post a link on my Facebook or I write a LinkedIn article, somebody clicks that tracking link and buys, buys anything, I know where that cell came from. If Karen, not knowing about my affiliate system, decides to go recommend the 90 days to her sister and that person buys randomly, there's no tracking. That's called dark social. It's not like it's not like the dark internet. What is it? Uh, Dark web. Yeah, it's not the dark web. It's not like ooey, scooey, scary, right? This is like somebody in a private message where there's zero link back trackability said, you should go call Jenna. I may or may not ever find out where that lead came from. That happens all over Facebook. Where are my moms? Anybody know mom groups? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, I'm, I'm, I need to ask my tribe. I need a really good maid, y'all know one? Every day. Every day. Oh my gosh, I'm the worst mom. I didn't plan my daughter's birthday and it's coming up in a week. Where can I last minute get in for a birthday party? Who's that chick who's got the cookies? I know I saw them like a year ago. Where's the chick who can do the unicorn cookies? We ask for recommendations all the freaking time on social media. How many audiences are you building? I build two, and I build them just as ferociously each one. One is the people who are going to be my clients, obviously, right? We want to build that audience. That's what we want. Now, what about your free audience? What about the absolute masses that will support you? And when Becky asks for a recommendation on Facebook, there's five people tagging you. None of them are your clients, but you've helped them just enough. They're like, Jenna's your girl. I can't keep up with everything on social my groups anymore, but if I help enough people in those groups, they'll tag me. And now I've just gotten the social proof to close the business, and I got to skip all those skips and steps and jump to straight five. Somebody else did all the work for me because of social media. When I first started, I would just say, hey, um, veterans and moms, bring the coffee because mom's got a Starbucks addiction one hour and I'll sit down with you. They are my free fan base now. Didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> All in Facebook group and some of them hired new clients. So what are you doing in each one of these stages? Y'all say y'all want to use social media. Y'all came here to see some fluffy shit. Somebody tell you, there's lots of people on social media. You should like totally use it. Nah, nah. Where are you at? Where are they at? How are you using it right?
Any questions? You're like, no, nah, can we just go drink? <laughs> um, if y'all have questions, I mean, I do have one task for you, though. I forgot to turn on the lights. I'll go through and turn on the lights. In the back, there's some cubes. I can probably find some more paper. In your seat is a very complicated version of what I just talked about. Just go around and get ideas of how your company can leverage each one of the eight stages on social media or leveraging the assets you already have for those of you who do have lists. And if you're missing something, here's the thing. Y'all come to things like this. I hate motivational things. I hate training as much as I go. Like, it's my thing. I'll write notes for all of it. People come to this shit, and y'all should still come. Like, seriously, come next time. But they come here, and they don't implement. And I'll see the same people over and over and over again in the same damn spot three years later. Stuck between their ears. Stuck, with, stuck in perfection. Before you leave, figure out how you're going to leverage social media and the assets you already have, look at you, in each one of these spaces, especially if you ain't got one of those spaces filled. Fair game? Go ahead, Bob. Question. So you mentioned um, social proof. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when you get that social proof? Let, let me tell you what my challenge is. Okay. I get that strictly by accident. Like, I'm doing a lot of this stuff by accident. It is not because I'm a social media. You and me both. Right? Um, I just keep throwing darts, and I just throw them faster than everybody else. Right? But, so what happens is, partly my fault, because I'm, like, super in, busy. Busy. But I'll get the social proof. What, so, you know, strategy, process. What do you do to convert it? Or what is your process of getting Is the it social to the proof point you're of, getting, are they not an existing customer? The, well, some of them are and some of them aren't. Some of them are just people that I've helped. So let's say asked, it's not, so questions. understand you're gonna have clients, right? We all I'm hoping y'all have clients, right? You're gonna have people who never will convert. They will never be your clients. Ever. That's just it. I've helped moms who are just setting up PTA. They don't run businesses, they don't need a website, they don't need funnels, they don't need ads, but they do want to understand the concept so they can help bring in people to their PTA, right? They're never going to be your clients. So you just have to accept that there might be people who are raving fans, never will be a client. And then you will have haters. And if you don't have haters, you ain't doing something right. You should have haters. You should have some enemies. I feel like women, we're the worst of that because like, oh, no, we don't want to make anybody mad. No, screw that. <laughs> Click bottle sucks. Um, Russell Brunson's a really nice guy, though. Um, you need those three groups. You do. You even need the negative reviews. I mean, the negative review wasn't a review of my performance. I said make Facebook fun again because I had clients. I was actually sitting down there with Randy. And one of the realtors he works with, he's like, she was like, you know what? I really don't want to use Facebook anymore. It's just gotten so political. No. So I created a Facebook ad. I was like, this will get great relevancy scores. Hashtag make Facebook fun again. I got two negative reviews from that from liberal people. They're like, you're just privileged. You don't. I'm like, no. You're missing the point. I just want a space to have some fun at at the end of a long day. Those negative reviews are not a reflection of me. But I can turn around and I can leverage them and be like, oh my gosh. Guys, to my business mom groups, I got two negative reviews for saying make Facebook fun again. I can tell them the whole story, and all of a sudden I've got five positive reviews. Will they ever be a client? Mm -mm. But they're your secret sales force. But they've gone through now, and they've promote or they've advocated for me. They will tag me. They will actively promote me. Now you can go through there. I absolutely recommend it. Recommend you do the feedback loop. Thank you so much, Becky, for recommending me. It was like a joy working with you in our one-on-one -on -one conversation and, you know, whatever that you're thanking her for. Hey, true story, I have a group on. You can go get, you know, I know that you're not really down with your business at this point, but a little education, we're doing a master class. It's only 39 bucks. I normally charge 197 for it. If you're interested, 
I'd love to have you. And you know what? Because we're good friends and all, I'm going to have a special notebook, one of my books, whichever one you know everyone loves and wants. I'm going to have it waiting for you. Now, don't ask for it in front of everyone. I'm going to give it to you on the side. So you've given her a little bit of sight, right? So you can close the sale. If they don't, they come over here and they don't move to sales, re-engage, re-subscribe, re-convert, re-excite. Same thing over here. Get them to buy your core offer. Get them to buy something else. If they're not, get them to go in circles. Make sure you ask for feedback. Don't, don't ask for a review before asking for feedback. You don't want the negative people who are mad at you <laughs> leaving reviews. And you just circle them up there. These are giant circles you get to fill out. And then if you do this right, remember I said there's three ways to make money? Awareness is the most expensive. You get the promotion, you get the social proof, that goes up, this cost goes down. It's like accounting, it's like everything. Any other questions? I will totally geek out forever, so be careful with your questions. All right, so there's pins in there. Everyone has pins down here. There's paper over there. I can acquire some more paper if y'all need some to write. Y'all can even use my board if y'all are like the big thinker writers. Y'all need to write everywhere. Have fun, get some more food. Don't make me take all that food home. It will go right to my tush. <laughs> oh, they're so quiet. <laughs> and do make sure that I have your email and I can actually read it out there out front and I will make sure I will make sure this time to get the recordings out by the end of the week.